Hi everybody. In the previous video we talked about the atom transfer radical polymerization as one of the techniques for the controlled polymerization and if you remember we mentioned that by the help of a complex complexing ligand you see here this bipyridine and the metal uh, transition transition metal that we have here as the copper uh, we will be able to detach the halogen from the polymer chain that we have <clears throat> in order to form the radicals and do the propagation and because the constant for the reversible reaction is larger than the constant for the reaction in this way the amount of available radicals will be decreased and as a matter of fact the termination which has the reaction constant uh, uh, to the power of 2 reaction rate to the power of 2 will be decreased more compared to the propagation which has the reaction rate of 1 However, now we are going to talk about another uh, polymerization technique called the raft. It's the reversible addition fragmentation chain transfer polymerization. Uh, I want to precisely explain the details of what this big sentence, you know, big phrase means. Why is it reversible? Why is it addition and fragmentation? Why is it chain transfer? So all of these together. Well, <clears throat> mm, I don't want to go through these because it will be a little bit hard for you to understand. Before that, I want to show you an animation. You know, let me just explain. A video of the person who invented this raft method for the first time in Australia and let's just listen to this professor and after he explains everything I will try to explain them uh, again but just remember that we will have the transfer agent you see here which has two sulfur so it is a diphyoster and we have our polymer chain which will attach to it and something that you see here will detach from the chain transfer agent okay so it comes here and this goes here creates a radical okay then again it comes here and it goes away creating a radical again there it comes here it goes away creates a radical it goes for the polymerization then it comes back it detaches and creates a radical to go for the polymerization again it comes back so you see that this one and this one <clears throat> the addition when it is added to it and the fragmentation when it is detached from it is happening over time again and again in a reversible way you see once this way once that way but anyway let's listen to the professor don't be like the third process raft it can be a one word can be pronounced as an English word, but this is the reversible addition fermentation chain transfer. And I was uh, very lucky to be part of the team, uh, came up with this new process, uh, and we published the first paper in 1998. So, what is RAF? RAF, as I mentioned before, is a process for you to making a polymer such as this uh, structure here, but based on the monomer that you want to polymerize. And the whole process all rely on is the selection of the rock reagent, such as this compound. So, for you to need to understand the mechanism, I have to come back to this slide, but I'll show you in this animation here. Let's have a look. 
This is the rock reagent. This is the initiator. And this is the monomer that you want to polymerize. So you can see the radical addition, fermentation, addition, fermentation, reversibly. So this rock reagent almost will work like a policeman to do what? To do the control and direct the polymerization, okay? And based on these thiocarbonyl compounds. So let me go back to the slides here. So the, the, as you see that animation, the process will involve repeat sequence of the radical addition to the monomer to this uh, rock reagent and then fermentation and come back reversibly. So this is where the words reversible come into the mechanism. And with, with that mechanism, with time, every chain of the polymer are almost equal to do the equilibrium. And that gives you the outcome. The polymer chain are almost identical in chain length. And we have the terms called the dispersity as narrow as 1.05 or up to 1.2. So that, this is the outcome of the rock process. And also, as you can see from the animation as well, also from here, the initial rock reagent one use for the monomer that you want to polymerize, the outcome is just inserting the monomer units to this rock reagent. So we're still retaining what we call the living end group and allow us to further manipulation of the process. So if you do it well, everything's we fall into what we call the living polymer, precisely controlled molecular way because we know the monomer concentration we use and also the rock reagent concentration. And with this, the precise molecular weight you can actually dial up. We published uh, starting with 1998. We have a series of reviews. We put, uh, support the Austria Chem, so all our reviews is in Austria, uh, Austria Chem, and so on. Okay, now let's get back again into the slides. I hope that uh, you've understood everything uh, explained by the professor. As it was shown in the animation, you saw that the uh, polymer, m let's say the monomers, they go and attach and let's say attach to the uh, transfer agent that we have and something will detach, it will be fragmented. Okay, and because it has the radical, it will go for the propagation and again it comes back for the addition and again it goes for the fragmentation and we have the radical, it goes for the propagation. Let's follow it uh, from the animation again. So as it can be seen here, we have the raft agent, this is the raft agent, and it already has its R group. It's something different from the group uh, R that you saw in the slides. This R is part of this raft agent, and this is the initiator. So when we introduce our monomers into the sample, you will see that uh, Let's say it. Let's see it again. It will. This initiator will go for the monomer, and the first propagation is happening. Then this radical will become, will come here, and the radical will go for that. And this is the equilibrium station that you saw in the slide. Let me show you. You see it here in the middle we have the raft agent on one side we have the polymer and one on one side we have the R group so just look at this and you see it here now this is the raft agent on one side we have the uh, initiator and the polymer and on the other side we have the original R group uh, of the raft agent then this radical will go here and again it goes for another monomer and it comes back why does it come back 
because this is an equilibrium reaction it has to come back because it has affinity towards it the reaction equilibrium forces it to go for there and you see here again the radical came here and now it comes here again addition fragmentation addition fragmentation so this was how the raft polymerization works and let me just give you some more details about these colors that you have see here you see here well as it can be seen the polymerization first started by an initiator okay let me show you again so we had our initiator and you see that when the monomers are introduced in the sample the first initiator first goes for the monomer and then uh, the addition occurs you see here and now the R group is detached for this polymer chain that you see here the end group I can say the one of the end groups of this chain is uh, the initiator however for this chain one of the end groups is the R group of the transfer agent this is exactly what you see here some of the chains have the initiator at their ends and some others have the R group of the raft agent on their ends on the other hand all of them at the end have the raft agent without this R group you see what are these purple balls these are the uh, they file is there let me show you again in the animation so the purple colors that you saw in the slide are just this raft agent this is responsible for having the raft polymerization under control you can for example when your monomers are finished you cannot uh, you can I, you cannot say that your polymerization is finished as well if you introduce more monomers these chains are still alive these are active so they can they can again when they see the monomers they can go for them and continue the polymerization reaction and this is the reason why we told you before that the controlled polymerization is also called the living polymerization the reason is just because of this because this is a raft agent which can be detached from this polymer chain in a reversible way to continue the polymerization process now let's have a look at the advantages and disadvantages of the raft polymerization well the first uh, advantage is that when we use the raft polymerization we can easily perform it in water as the solvent on the other hand in the raft polymerization we do not have to use the uh, transition metals such as copper because they are toxic and uh, they don't need the uh, transition metals so it's safer on the other hand one of the disadvantages of the raft polymerization is the presence of the sulfur uh, in the raft agent which gives us a yellowish water 
and also for the students who work for who work with the raft polymerization some side effects some toxic effects may occur finally let's just see an example from the literature and you see here that for the polymerization of this uh, pentafluorine uh, we have the double bond here and by the use of the raft agent you see the uh, Firester and the R group and the Z group and uh, we will finally do our polymerization uh, and here we have used this used it for the hydroxy problem uh, metacrylate and you see that finally after the polymerization we can functionalize them with the fluorine 18 which is a good uh, imaging agent it can be detected and uh, that's all about the raft polymerization please try to understand why it is reversible as we mentioned here uh, why it is the addition why it is the fragmentation and why it contains the chain transfer let me just remind you again that the addition is because the R group goes for here the fragmentation is because the uh, another R group uh, detaches the chain transfer is because one chain here and one chain here uh, they, they just transfer the raft agent between each other and it's reversible because it can occur in both directions in a, in an under an equilibrium state so that's all you have to know about the raft polymerization and within the next video we will continue with the ring opening uh, polymerization known as the ROP